Hello and welcome to COVID Conversations. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, and we're hosting sessions like this by way of Zoom to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting our everyday lives. And I have as my guest today, Dr. Avis Artist, and she has been a long time practicing obstetrician and gynecologist in, in Durham. She's retired now, but she was in practice for more than 20 years. And we're gonna talk about breast cancer awareness during the month of October and in the midst of COVID-19. Hello, Dr. Artis, how are you? I am well. Good, 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 good to see you. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know that you're retired, but you do a lot in the community. Can we talk a little bit about the things that you're busy with? Um, I am do most of my volunteer work um, with an organization um, called The Links and some also with the Community Health Coalition. Um, so I'm doing some mentoring um, and some talks um, on healthcare, um, doing those things. And, um, trying to also have a little fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important too. So um, can we talk about, because it's um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, can we talk about maybe the symptoms of breast cancer within patients and what should, what should people be aware of when they're thinking that? Um, um, about certainly, um, the most common symptom um, that patients would notice would be a lump or a mass in their, in their breast. Um, other signs of breast cancer that a patient might notice are skin changes. Um, sometimes there may be some thickening of the skin, um, also some wrinkling um, of the skin, and that's usually called pota orange because it um, feels and looks sort of like um, an orange peel um, over the changes over the, the skin. Also, um, sometimes um, patients might have um, some bloody discharge um, from the nipple and um, may have some enlarged lymph nodes underneath their arms. Okay. What about um, African-American women and um, white women? Do Black women have um, instances of cancer more than white women or is it the same what, what are some of the, um, the totals? What are, what are the ratios like there? Okay. Um, for African-American women um, who are under the age of 60, the incidence of breast cancer is a, is a little bit higher um, than Caucasian women. Um, for women over 60, Caucasian women have a higher incidence. And if you look at all population of women, um, Caucasian women do have um, a slightly higher incidence of breast cancer. However, where Black women um, unfortunately lead is in mortality or, or deaths from breast cancer. And we certainly have um, a higher death rate um, than Caucasian women. Any idea why? Um, some of it has to do with the fact that um, African-American women may be diagnosed at a more advanced stage, um, meaning we're diagnosed later. Um, some of it may have to do with lifestyle issues. Um, some of it may have to do with genetics, um, particularly um, the um, triple negative um, breast cancers. Um, most people are familiar with the term estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor, and there's also a HERS re receptor, uh, so that those kinds of um, tumors are triple negative or much more common in African American women, and they tend to be more aggressive. Um, and tumors, and they're starting to look and see if we can find a genetic link um, for those kinds of breast cancers. So you, you talked about um, breast cancer and, and different stages and maybe um, African-American women getting um, diagnosed when um, cancer is in a later stage. So can we talk about the different stages of breast cancer? 
Certainly, um, there are four stages of breast cancer and um, it tends to, so it's one through four um, is, is how they're staged. Um, breast cancer is also staged, um, has to do with the lymph node status. Um, so stage one would be obviously the earliest stage where the, the cancer is confined to the breast. Um, then as the cancer leaves the breast and may be more of a regional cancer. So it's outside of the breast may um, spread to the lymph nodes that uh, under the arm that, that drain the breast tissue. Um, breast cancer obviously can also spread um, far away um, to bones and um, to the liver and other organs, the lungs, um, so that there's an advance in the staging um, as, as the breast, tan breast cancer spreads. The other um, additional um, staging criteria um, that was added in 2018 is the type of, um, so the sort of embryology and genetics of the breast tumor has also been added um, to the staging criteria so that when a when a patient is staged, um, the stage more accurately represents um, the outcome or the expected um, treatment success um, for that stage. My goodness, there's a, a lot to consider. What about um, the breast cancer at home um, exams? I know that when I used to go to get my, my yearly exams, the doctor would hand me a pamphlet or I would see um, some illustrations in the office about how to do self-breast exams. So right. are, are, is, is the self-breast exam something that's still in the in the toolbox of, if I could use that term, <laughs> of, of, um, of female, of, of doctors who, who help with female issues? Um, yes, um, because um, breast cancers are most commonly diagnosed with mammograms. So 85% of patients with the diagnosis, um, the diagnosis would be found by a mammogram. But 15% of patients um, present with a lump. And that's a lump that either the patient found or your healthcare provider found. So that the reason that I would recommend patients continue to do self-breast exams is because in, if you're healthy, um, you're only going to go to the doctor once or twice a year. And sometimes the physician on that once or twice a year might not do a breast exam um, for you. So um, lumps could become extremely large. I um, usually would recommend for premenopausal women um, that they would um, perform a, a breast exam the week after their menstrual cycle has left. Um, breasts will be least tender and least lumpy during that time. For menopausal ladies who don't have um, a menstrual cycle to guide them, then I usually recommend that you choose just one day of, of the month. And it's easy if we just choose our birthday. So if your birthday is on the 7th, then then just choose the seventh and, and do the exam. Uh, a lot of patients are concerned that they don't know what they're doing. Um, but what I would always um, say to my patients is if you do it every month, you're gonna learn what's normal for you. And, and your only goal is to be able to identify when something's changed. And then it's up to your healthcare provider to decide if this is a normal lump or an abnormal lump. So can we talk about um, COVID-19 and breast cancer screening? So how ha how has COVID-19 affected um, breast cancer screenings during, um, during lockdown? Yeah, during lockdown, um, there was a significant decrease um, uh, in the amount of screenings and some of that had to do with um, facilities not being open um, and facilities attempting to save, you know, PPE for um, acute care facilities. Um, but they, at, at the present time in North Carolina, um, mammogram appointments are being made 
And um, so we would advise um, patients who've gotten behind um, to, to catch up and call. The other um, thing that um, I discovered is some people think you have to have a prescription or referral for a mammogram. So if you are, you know, 40 or 50 and you've been having mammograms um, so that it's appropriate, so we're not speaking of 25 year olds or, you know, 30 year olds, but if you um, are getting regular screenings, you can call and make that appointment yourself. And then when they're scheduling, they will inquire who your primary care doctor is um, that should receive the report, but you can schedule that appointment yourself. So you don't need to wait for your provider to schedule an appointment for you. So, so that if you're behind and you haven't seen the doc, but you know it's over a year since you had your mammogram, you can reach out, schedule your appointment, and then your, your um, results will be sent to both you and to your provider. So um, Dr. Artisan, if screenings don't happen, what could happen to outcomes of breast cancer patients? Right. Right, so, so because most breast cancers are ident identified on mammograms and mammograms identify microscopic or smaller changes um, so early, then what, what patients risk um, by and what COVID may cause is that we may have an increase in diagnosis of more higher stage tumors. Um, mm -hmm. because the mammogram obviously is, is not meant to diagnose the large lumps that the provider and the patient can feel, but microscopic or small disease that is not palpable yet. And that's when we have the, the better outcomes is when we have a lower stage and earlier diagnosis. So, so short answer is we, we, we'd have more loss of life, uh, more deaths from, from breast cancer when, when we don't get our screenings early. So what about, what about some of those screenings? What are, are some of the services that can be um, delayed by COVID? Um, um, mammogram screening might be one. What are some of the others? Um, I, I think during COVID, um, and we'll talk about general health things, yes. um, for men, I guess the, the prostate cancer screenings may not be done. Um, things that um, diabetes um, screenings um, and healthcare. Um, I was reading recently that we're um, diabetes in patients is being less well controlled because patients aren't going um, to, to the doctors. And of course, that makes the patient more high risk for, um, for getting COVID infections and then, you know, more likely to have bad outcomes. Um, so all of our um, routine cholesterol, diabetes, um, all those um, blood pressure checks, um, all those things that we have routinely been doing may have been delayed or um, because we're having lots of virtual office visits and we're not actually going into the yes, office, yes. We, we may not have been getting our blood work um, or our, you know, blood pressure screenings as, as appropriate. So um, we have just a, a couple of minutes left. So what would you tell people to help them stay safe during COVID when they're thinking about their, their breast health? Um, I, I would say, please um, go ahead and attempt to schedule your mammogram because at this point in our state, you should be able to get your mammogram scheduled um, and there's not a huge backlog. So if you call your normal place and, and they tell you we can't do it, you know, for six weeks, and you know that it's already been six months, then you can ask them where else might I call to, to get it scheduled. Um, please continue to um, do your breast exams um, and, you know, report 
abnormal findings. Um, there are also some things that are risk factors for breast cancer um, that have um, that we can do ourselves. Um, we obesity, um, particularly obesity after menopause, is associated with a higher risk. Um, so we can walk, um, work on our weight. Um, if we're a woman who's taking hormone replacement therapy, we might we might want to talk with our provider about limiting the total number of years of use to, to five years. Um, uh, another thing um, that has been associated with breast cancer is increased alcohol um, intake so that we might want to, to um, decrease that. And I know a lot of people um, during COVID and Lockdown um, probably have increased the the, the wine um, <laughs> um, intake, but we might want to decrease that. So those are all sort of small things that that we can do to to better our breast health. Dr. Artis, it's been my pleasure being with you today. You're, you're very welcome, and hopefully this is helpful for someone. It, it's my pleasure. Yes. Wear, wear our mask, wash our hands, and socially distance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. We definitely appreciate your time today. You're welcome. And we appreciate you watching and listening here on COVID Conversations on WNCU 90.7 FM. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. Until next time.